In this video, we will review the clinical anatomy of the hand. We will focus on the sensory and the motor supply. The radial, median, and ulnar nerves supply the hand, and we'll focus on each of these nerves individually. Starting off with the radial nerve. The radial nerve can be thought of as the extensor nerve, as it extends the wrist and the fingers. Its sensory input is to the dorsal three and a half of the fingers. In terms of its motor supply, it supplies the extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis, which extend the wrist radial side, and as well as the stensor carpi ulnaris, which extends the wrist ulnar side. It also supplies the finger extensors that extend the thumb as well as the second to the fifth digit. Patients with injury to the radial nerve may present with a wrist drop. Here you can see the normal movement supplied by the radial nerve, which is wrist and finger extension. Should there be an injury to the radial nerve, the patient may present with a wrist drop, given that there is failure of wrist extension. Moving on to the median nerve. The median nerve can be thought of as the flexor nerve, as it flexes the wrist and the fingers. It supplies sensation to the palmar radial three and a half fingers and the distal fingers dorsally. In terms of its motor supply, it supplies the flexor carpi radialis and the flexor pollicis longus. This is the flexor carpi radialis, which flexes the wrist radial side, and as well as the flexor pollicis longus, which flexes the thumb. It also supplies the thena muscles and as well as the FDSs or the flexor digitorium superficialis muscles and the FDPs, flexor digitorium profundus, but only of the second and the third digit. These flex the fingers at the DIPJ. It also supplies the radial lumbricals and the lumbricals flex the fingers at the MCPJ and extend them at the PIPJ. Abnormalities of the median nerve may present with a hand of benediction or an OK sign. We will quickly review the various movements supplied by the median nerve. It supplies the flexor copy radialis, which allows for radial sided wrist flexion, and as well as the flexor poly pollicis longus, which flexes the thumb, and as well as the lumbricals, the second and the third lumbricals, which flex the fingers at the MCPJ and extend them at the PIPJ. It also supplies the second to the fifth FDSs, which flexes the fingers at the MCPJs and the PIPJs, and the second and the third FDPs, which flex the fingers at the DIPJ, but only of the second and the third finger. As a quick review, abnormalities of the radial nerve may present with a wrist drop. Should a patient have an injury to the median nerve, they may present with a hand of benediction. A patient is asked to make a fist, and the patient is then unable to flex the first, second, and third digit when asked to make it. And this is what you would see, which is a hand of benediction. The first, second, and third digits remain extended. Patients may also present with an OK sign. This is a normal OK sign where you would expect to see flexion at the first IPJ and flexion at the second DIPJ. This is an abnormal OK sign where the IPJ remains extended and the second DIPJ also remains extended. Lastly, we'll review the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve supplies sensation to the ulnar one and a half of the fingers. In terms of its motor supply, it supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris, which flexes the wrist ulnar side, and as well as the FDPs of the fourth and fifth digit. Also supplies the adductor pollicis, which adducts the thumb, and the ulnar lumbricals, as shown here. It supplies the hypothena muscles, and as well as the interarsial muscles, which are not shown here, which adduct and abduct the fingers. Patients with abnormalities of the ulnar nerve may present with an ulnar claw or a froman sign. Movements related to the ulnar nerve include flexion of the wrist as it supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris, as well as flexion at the 4th and 5th MCPJ and extension at PIPJ as it supplies the 4th and 5th lumbricals. And the ulnar nerve also supplies the 4th and 5th FDPs, which allows for 4th and 5th DIPJ flexion. Patients with injury to the radial nerve may present with a wrist drop as previously discussed. Injury to the median nerve may present with the hand of benediction or an abnormal OK sign. And patients with injury to the ulnar nerve may present with an ulnar claw. So these patients are asked to extend their fingers and fail to extend the fourth and fifth digit due to the lumbricals which are supplied by the ulnar nerve not being adequately able to extend at the PIPJs. So here there's hyperextension at the MCPJ, however the PIPJ remains flexed. Patients may also present with an abnormal Froman sign. The patient is asked to hold a piece of paper in between their thumb and index finger. And patients who have weak thumb adductors will flex at the IPJ of the thumb in order to hold this piece of paper.